Hey guys, this is Kevin from jazztime.com and today we'll be comparing the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph, reference number 263-20OR.00.D002CR.01 versus the AP Royal Oak Offshore Chronograph, which is reference number 264-70OR.00.A002CR.01. We'll be, and of course, uh, while that reference number was a mouthful, we'll I'll have the description or link to these watches in the description below. Uh, just to let you know, we'll be comparing the case, the bezel, the dial, the uh, straps, the class, and the movements. And then we'll talk about a couple of special features that these two Audemars Piguet watches have. Okay, so let's compare the case first. Um, this, with this regular chronograph, the case size is 41 millimeters in diameter. That's from my index finger to my thumb here. With the offshore chronograph is just a tiny bit larger, being one additional millimeter in size, so it's 42 millimeters. And once again, that's from my index finger to my thumb. From the face, they don't look quite different in terms of size, but that's but the thicknesses is where the Audemars Piguet watches are different. So let me go ahead and turn that over for you. With the regular chronograph, you can see here, it has a very nice low profile. This is actually uh, this is 10.88 millimeters thick, and the dive or uh, the offshore chronograph is a bit larger, being at 14.19 14.19 millimeters thick. So the offshore chronograph has a much higher profile over the regular chronograph. As you can see there, it's almost double. Um, well, not really being double, but it has just has such a high profile and that's definitely something you want to keep in mind if you wear uh, clothing that has lots of uh, cuffs in it and you don't want to stretch out the cuffs or you know get the watch cut in, uh, cut in it such as suits um, that's definitely something you should keep in mind is that profile okay so let's go ahead and move on and compare the dials okay so on my left, the regular chronograph has a black dial with it uh, has a black dial, while the offshore on my right has a ro has a rose uh, rose gold dial, and they both have a sort of square patterning uh, patterning uh, on the dial itself. As you can see, the Audemars Piguet has these like tiny uh, smaller smaller patterning, while the off uh, offshore chronograph has larger squares on the back. Uh, the actual term for these that Audemars Piguet provides is for the regular chronograph here on my left. The it's called a grand tapisserie, and the offshore chronograph pattern is referred to as the mega tapisserie. And that difference, once again, is just the size of the squares of those patterns. As you can see, um, the offshore chronograph has a lot less squares, but much larger, and obviously, vice versa for the regular chronograph. Okay, so the index, the index markers on the, the regular chronograph are white index markers fashioned in 18 karat rose gold. Same thing, same for the hand as, hands as well. Uh, that's to prevent tarnishing. For the uh, for the offshore chronograph, we have Arabic numerals that are black, uh, fashioned in 18 karat rose gold as well, and. They don't look like it, but they actually do have a luminescent coating on it. So this, so both of these watches do glow in the dark for up to eight hours. Okay, um, both both watches have the date function. Uh, for the chrono regular chronograph, it's right here between the four and the five o'clock position, while for the offshore, it's here at the three o'clock position. Okay, uh, one thing to note is I'd like to talk about the sub dials uh, I'll talk more about that in the special features but I just wanted to let you know a little bit about them the so, so the sub dials have the 12 o'clock uh, 12 hour cycle on the left one uh, indicated by the 3 6 and 9 and 12 the bottom one tracks 60 seconds was indicated by the 15 30 45 and 60 and the right sub dial has a 30 minute cycle with the 10 20 and 30 indicated there the same the same goes for the the Royal Oak or rather the offshore 
we have the, instead the 12 o'clock cycle on the bottom here indicated by the 36912. On the left, we have the 30 minute uh, cycle, which is indicated by the 10, 20, and 30, and the second cycle, uh, not indicated by anything, but that is for the seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the brace, uh, the straps of these APs. So the straps are uh, fairly uh, straightforward and simple. They're they're both very durable, very sleek black alligator leather. They both taper. Uh, they both taper from the case, uh, from the case to the start of the bracelets. As you can see there, it has that. There's that thin has that thin tapering is a little bit thicker towards the front and tapers down to the thinner same thing with the uh, offshore you have this thick tapering and it goes into a thin and one thing to mention is that the offshore's uh, strap is much thicker um, but that but that's because the case is also much thicker so that's one thing to keep in mind uh, the reason for that tapering however is to keep um, to keep with the shape of the wrist so it fits much more nicely so let's move on to the class uh to the buckles now so here on the left we have automar piguet's automar uh, name uh embossed onto the buckle itself and this one is a uh, automar uh folding class so all you need to do is just pop it out oops very simple very easy to use it's concealed as well and it sits behind the uh, sits behind the strap itself and clicks down very easy and very nice for the for the offshore we have a standard pen buckle uh, which is kind of a pain to use but still it's very more it's much more secure than the that folding class that the regular chronograph has as you can see just very simple 18 karat rose gold buckle pops right in you just choose a slot bam it's just not that complicated but it is a little more of a hassle than just having to pop up a pop open the class and having it uh and then and then just putting it on okay so let's go ahead and talk about the case backs now so the royal oak case back uh, rather the regular chronographs case back has the royal oak uh, model name uh, embossed on the center has this nice sand finish all around with a high polish around the edges as you can see it's very reflective uh, and adds that additional shine to the back of the case very very pleasing to the eye okay for the for the offshore we have a nice uh, glare proof and see-through transparent sapphire crystal that lets us see the inner workings of the watch, the movements. Uh, we also see that 22 karat gold oscilla uh, oscillating weight uh, jiggle there. And we also have the model name engraved at the top of the case as well. It's very cool. Uh, I can definitely, you know, I personally would probably take this off and show it to a friend just to show them that the cool exhibition case back. But other than that, it really just, you know, it sits on top of your wrist mm -hmm. and most of the time. So even though, go, even though it has this nice exhibition case back, that's something to uh, keep in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the movements now. Okay, so the move, the movement of the regular uh, regular chronograph is a twenty uh, self winding twenty three eighty uh, caliber twenty three eighty five movement. That's eight piece in house movement. It's made up of a total of thirty seven joules and three hundred and different three hundred and four different parts to allow for this for the chronograph feature, which I'll talk about uh, later in the uh, later in the video. It's a very it's just a fancier way of saying that it's a stopwatch or timer feature. And also allows for the quick adjustment of the date. For the for the um, offshore uh, offshore chronograph, it uses AP's in-house self-winding manufacturer caliber 3126 slash 38 uh, 3840, which makes use of 59 joules and 365 parts, and offers a 50-hour power reserve. So 50 hour power reserve compared, this is compared to the regular chronographs power reserve of 40 hours, so you get 10 additional hours. 
Okay, the water resistance of each of these chronographs, the regular chronograph here on the left has a water resistance of 50 meters or 164 feet, while the offshore chronograph has double, double that, being uh, 100 meters or 330 uh, feet of water resistance. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the bezels now. Okay, so the bezel, bezel, let's see here, oops. Okay, so the bezel of the uh, chronograph on, on the regular chronograph on the left here is a very, uh, very simple uh, satin finish rose gold bezel with a high polish around, high polish around the edges, same thing like the case back, gives it an additional very nice shine, as you can see there as I tilt it around. Um, but that high polish can be scuffed very easily as it, sit, as it sits above, it sits like a protrusion above the case. So be careful when walking around with this, make sure not to catch anything or knock it. Uh, this, and the same could be, the same could be said about the offshore, uh, offshore chronograph. Though this one is a little bit larger, as I mentioned before, the thickness is four millimeters, about four millimeters thicker than the regular chronograph. So this one uh, might be more susceptible to scuffs and damage as the high polish is a little bit larger too as well. But overall, the bezels are pretty much, uh, pretty much the same. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and talk about a few of the special features of the watches. So, I'm going to start off with the regular chronograph. Uh, this, this, the workings of the chronograph is the same for both. Uh, it's just that the pushers are a little bit different. So these two, these two pushers right here. There's one at the two o'clock position and one at the four o'clock position. These are called the chronograph pushers. So if you if you haven't noticed, in the center, in the center, we have the second hand at the twelve o'clock position, and that hasn't moved since we started the video. And that's because this is to allow for the, the chronograph, that chronograph feature. All you have to do is press that two o'clock, uh, the two o'clock position pusher, and it starts that second hand. As it, tick, as it ticks down, it'll do, uh, you know, revolution after revolution. Each revolution will add a tick to the 30 minute, uh, 30 minute cycle, and every two revolutions of that 30 minute cycle will add a tick to the 12, uh, one uh, tick in the 12 hour cycle. Okay, so a little bit of back history on that chronograph feature is because it was used to track horse, uh, horse race laps. So let's just say your favorite horse is coming around the corner now and you want to you you know, you write down the time, you can just, bam, press it, stops at seconds hand. So how many seconds has it been? Oh, it's been 35 seconds. Very simple, you can write that down. And then, but what do you go from here? How do you track it? How do you track the next one? Well, I just, all you just have to do is just hit that reset at the bottom right here at the four o'clock position, and that second hand will return to the twelve o'clock position. The, this real this um, four four o'clock chronograph pusher will also reset the thirty minute cycle and also the twelve hour cycle as well. So it'll reset all three of those things. Pretty cool. So let me go ahead. Always make sure you screw. Anything you unscrew, always make sure to screw back down nice and snug against the case. You don't want water to get into your case from anywhere. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the quick set date feature now, which is, is that pops open there. So that original position was a wearing position where you could wear the watch and it should be, you know, this, the crown is nice and snug against the case. The position it's in now is the winding position. And just one click after the winding position allows you to adjust the date. As you can see, it's very easy, very simple to adjust the date here over here between the four o'clock and the five o'clock position. As I go clockwise, it just immediately turns. And it's for so much easier than having to move the hands around two revolutions around a dial in order to move the date once. So that's a, that's a very nice feature. Okay. Uh, the, same, the same could be said for the offshore, uh, except that the pushers are a little bit different but they pretty much have the same the same features. As you can see, if you press the top the top pusher at the two o'clock position, it goes ahead and moves, and then you can reset it as well. Very simple, very easy to use, and also it has that uh, it also has that tachymeter located all around the side as well. Okay. So let me go ahead and show you how these watches look on the wrist. Once again, very simple. You just pop that open. Okay. 
Oops. Oops, having a little trouble here. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So we have, there we have it. That's the regular, uh, the regular Royal Oak chronograph on my on my wrist. The, really, that rose gold really blends nicely with the color with my, the color of my wrist, and that black really pop, that black really pops because of that rose gold contrasting against it. It's very very beautiful. Okay, now let me show you the uh, Royal Oak Offshore chronograph. So once again. Just very simply press it through, pin in, pin in and down. There we go. Look at that. Look at that very high profile on the wrist. But that that dial is so beautiful. Just look at that. Okay, so so. I really hope that this comparison lets you see the similarities and differences between these two Audemars Piguet watches. They're both very high quality, uh, high quality watches, and really, it's all up to preference of. Uh, it's really all up to preference on you know what you need the watch for and what you plan to do with it. If you plan on wearing it casually, looking for a more sporty watch. Um, Honestly, and for my suggestions, if you're looking for something that you're looking for to wanting to wear every day, it looks nice and classy, very simple. And, you know, just overall easy, you know, easy to uh, easy to use. I would definitely go with the you know the regular uh, chronograph because the profile is is very nice and low. fits under fits under a suit very nicely or any other dress shirts. The cuffs doesn't stretch them out or anything. Uh, you know, the chronograph isn't as the chronograph isn't as busy. The index markers are very simple, and that rose gold really matches really matches with the skin color. And it's just very very nice overall. That black leather strap as well, and as well as that clasp with that ease of access of just you know having to pop it open and just slapping it on your wrist very very easily. But if you're looking for a more sporty watch, a uh, more sporty watch, a more bold look, I would definitely go with the you know the uh, the Royal Oak Offshore in Offshore instead. It is, it is a sport. It's more of a sporty watch as it does have that extra additional water resistance. Um, and, you know the case is much larger. It has a much higher profile as well, so it is kind of hard to be wearing this casual uh, casually as it might get caught under you know. Uh, whatever you wear that has tighter cuffs but overall it's still a very beautiful watch that strap that strap is absolutely just gorgeous has as uh like i said is thicker because of the case so it just feels overall very nice on the wrist for something that um feels a little bit larger but 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 for whatever you decide check out our website at jazztime uh, jazztime.com we have the lowest prices um we have the lowest prices guaranteed. We offer free shipping and a one-year warranty. If you like the video and you want to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon.